अजहर साहब वेरी गुड इवनिंग एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग एज दिस ऑडियंस वी एक्सप्रेस आर ग्रेटिट्यूड टू यू वी वुड लाइक टू टेल आर लिस्नर्स दैट अजहर हुसैन साहब इज द गेस्ट ऑफ दिस वीक ही इज द सेक्रेटरी ऑफ द इंडो इस्लामिक कल्चरल फाउंडेशन द आई आई सी एफ विच विल ओवर लुक एंड ओवर सी द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ अ मॉस्क at an alternative place that has been given by the government in ayodhya atar sahab uh, now that the foundation has been the ground breaking has been done for the ram temple at ayodhya what is the status on the mosque that the iii cf uh, proposes to build can you brief us about that sir our listeners and readers of the news agency would also like to know something in detail about IICF what is the blueprint of the foundation what is its mission what is the way ahead mr uh, mr can you just tell me athar sir what is it i uh, thank you mohit ji for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak to the uh, news agency platform and uh, as far as the status of the mosque you said this concern is at right now the indo islamic cultural foundation which is a trust which has been come into existence uh, with the initiative of up sunni central work board and uh, up sunni central work board was awarded this land a 5 acre land where this mosque and other public utility facilities that includes a hospital a community kitchen a indo islamic cultural center with a museum and a library will be coming up and since this land officially has been handed over to us uh, after properly being measured uh, by the sdm sohawal where village dhanipur comes where this land has been given on 17th of august so right after that we had made our measurements pre measurements done and we prepared a topography plan which we forwarded to the architect which we have appointed as a consultant architect professor s m akhtar who is a, a, a professor with faculty of architecture in jamia media islamia university and he is working on the plan so this is the present status sir there has been a lot of acrimony lot of bitterness between the hindus and muslims over these years over these decades or maybe centuries about the ram janmabhoomi and the babri mosque but once now that the court has settled everything it's done and dusted and uh, the government has also allocated land to both to the ram temple shrine and to the ayodhya mosque that is proposed how do you see the way ahead sir do you think that uh, all this bitterness will now die down and things will be normal yes uh, mohit ji you have rightfully mentioned and about that acrimony yes we cannot deny that it existed there was a lot of i would say uh, mistrust between both the communities and uh, over a period of time it has uh, really made its impact on the society too but now once this decision has come to the honorable supreme court we i have this uh, i really hope and I, i i know that and i sincerely desire that this thing will end and it will only end by certain efforts and the efforts we are going to take through this indo islamic cultural foundations initiative at the 5 acre piece of land we will come up with a mosque but as well as we are trying to come up with the public utility facility that includes a hospital that hospital will be a completely on the run on the charity model it will serve for the entire community of that area whether they be hindus or muslims we will be coming up with a community kitchen which will be at providing we to the uh, area nearby uh, with the sincere objective that nobody in that area sleeps hungry at least we'll try to provide one meal a day to those who are impoverished 
And similarly with this Indo-Islamic cultural uh, center which we are trying to bring and showcase the Indo-Islamic cultural in con uh, influences on our Indian society through a museum, through an archive and through library and publication. So we really hope if we make these efforts sincerely, obviously whatever the mistrust has been there will uh, lessen in coming years and hopefully it will end soon in the near future. Sir, sir, as you must be aware, there are a lot of conflicting reports about uh, the proposed mosque, the funding of the mosque, the size of the mosque, the name of the mosque. As a senior functionary and the spokesman of the IICF, would you like to clear the air and tell in detail how is the mosque going to be like? I don't know much about this aspect of conflicting reports because they have not come to my notice because I am very clear about it from the day one. And whatever my uh, media interactions have been, have been very specific that number one, they will not, that mosque will not be called a Babri mosque. That's for one thing is for sure. It will not be named by in the name of any Raja, Maharaja, Basha and uh, preferably I want it to be called by the name of the locality where it is in the village Dhanipur. So I would love it to be called uh, Masjid Dhanipur. But that's my personal choice and when the mosque comes there, obviously there will be deliberation on that. But as far as I know and what to the, my knowledge of Islam. For the mosque, it is not the name, the size, the design, its grandeur that matters. Because the namaz which is offered there, the obeisance which we do for Allah, the sajdas which you call it, it is that goes to Allah. And the five times a devout who makes his obeisance done on the floor of that mosque. It is that the Allah accepts. So obviously the name, the size and the grandeur doesn't matter. And as far as the funding is concerned, obviously we'll be doing it with crowdfunding. We have come up with a bank account. And soon we'll have our portal ready and those bank accounts will have gateways on that portal. And we will appeal to the society that they make contributions for mosque as well as for those community facilities which will be providing the interim hospital, a community kitchen and an Indo-Islamic cultural research center. For the mosque, we will be are very specific that there is only certain kind of category of money that can be accepted. That is like uh, there is no money from the interest or income, that is the biaj you call it, no money from any uh, non-Sharia uh, uh, trading like that is trading of the liquor and all that and the trading of which is done through hoarding uh, of uh, products like often we see the traders hoard some product and uh, they later sell it at a higher price that is not allowed in Islam that income is not acceptable. Uh, like if there is any farm product like potato or any other product which is hoarded in uh, cold storages by traders and they profit from that money, that money is not accepted. If a farmer sells at a higher price, that money is accepted. So we have strict guidelines for the money that can be accepted for the MOSS project. But for other community services, we can accept all legal sources of money which are uh, there as per the law of the plan, we will accept that. Sir, there have been sane voices from both sides. Both community, uh, community leaders from both the sides have been very reasonable, mature in their assimilation of the entire judgment and the subsequent follow-up that has happened. Do you see this to be stable and uh, do you want to say something that maintains communal harmony, peace? Yeah, I am pretty sure and I have confidence on 
our Indian society. We have, as a society, have been proponents of this plurality, which we call it. It is coexistence of so many ideas and thoughts. And we have existed for thousands of years with different ideas. And in the future, also, we will have similar coexistence of different ideas. And uh, the best way to preserve that is to have a better, like uh, our community leaders should really endeavor to provide for the society with sincere efforts. And if you do that, so I believe all such uh, things which you could say like acrimony, mistrust, they'll all end. And with this project at five acre land, at Moss uh, project we call it, of the Indo-Islamic Cultural Foundation, we try to do that. And we want to heal the society. And for healing the society, we don't have to now look into the past. We have to look into the future. In this pandemic situation right now, which is going on, which is a global medical emergency, has taught us entire community globally that we have to stick together. And if you don't stick together, like in our resolve to fight something, everybody will perish. So now is the time to prove that right. And we as a community should stick together and we should sincerely look forward for those efforts which try to make community come together. And we hope that we will really make a sincere effort in that line. Thank you, Adhar Saab, for sparing so much time for the news agency. We are uh, very grateful to you for uh, sharing so many thoughts and information. Thank you so much.